Here's a small report from uh, Catholic Vote. An article says Dodgers suffer historic defeat after honoring anti-Catholic group. Amid national backlash for honoring the anti-Catholic hate group, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, the Los Angeles Dodgers lost badly in the game that followed their controversial move. Uh, just again, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, they're not Catholic nuns, they're homosexual men from San Francisco. The San Francisco Giants routed the slumping LA Dodgers 15-0 on Saturday night for their season-high six straight win. Mm -hmm. ESPN reported it was the Giants' largest margin of victory over their National League West rivals since a 19-3 win on September 14, 2013. It also matches the worst home shutout and loss in, in Dodgers history, <laughs> which came in 1898 against, the Pix, against Pittsburgh when the team was based in Brooklyn. The Dodgers' Friday loss came hours after they conferred a community award to these homosexual men, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Just Yeah, Jesse, the Dodgers have indicated that they're going to grant this award, yes, and they did it. We were, we were there that night praying as it happened, and I will say this, that the United States Catholic uh, Bishops' Conference called on America's Catholics to pray in reparation for the blasphemies like these that were performed by this. Now, on Friday, that's us, Jess, uh, the crowd, a massive crowd, processed with the relic of St. John Paul II outside Dodger Stadium. Well, that was with Bishop Joseph Strickland uh, from Virgin Most Powerful Radio. We had him there. And um, his, uh, his comments to the people, Jesse, I'm just going to by bypass it. He, he said to the massive crowd, he said, Brothers and sisters, we cannot be shy about our faith. He said to the cheering crowd, urging Catholics to be strong enough to speak for what you believe. The East Texas bishop invoked the early Christian martyr like St. Irenaeus of Antioch, who was ready to be martyred for Jesus Christ, like most of the apostles. He said, I often say, and he says this on our radio show on Virgin Most Powerful all the time, we need to be first century Christians again in the 21st century. Uh, he said, probably most of us will not be called on to shed our blood, but if we are, we need to be ready like the martyrs, he added. But more importantly, we need to live our martyrdom. We need to live as though ready to die, ready to live for the blood that was shed for us all. See, Jesse, that inspirational talk by Strickland is on our website. It's on our full Sheena Head mm. uh, YouTube channel. And much of what went on on Friday was very inspirational. Jesse, I think Tommy Valentine, the director of Catholic Accountability Project, he also spoke at the rally. You introduced him. He had a good speech. Yeah, tell him, tell, give him a little bit about what he had to say to the crowd. He says, everything we do is to represent you and your voice, the faithful yep. Catholics and the yep. pews who care about our country and our culture. Mm -hmm. You have more powerful than you, you have more power than you think. Exactly. And then he said, what we're doing out here is just a beautiful, prayerful witness, which makes an incredible contrast to the bigotry and sacrilege on display inside. <laughs> then he thanked some of the organizers for, for, for organizing the rally. I'll tell you who the organizers were. So you guys are going to hear it from me. <laughs> My brother, Johnny. Absolutely. He was on yesterday with us. David and his wife. Yep. And uh, Laura Chavez, uh, after Holy Mass... Uh, they attend St. Didicus Catholic Church in Silmar. Their pastor's father, Robert Guerin. A, 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 he was a, there a, too, Jess. Yeah, a great priest, a holy priest, friend of the show. Yep. After Mass, they went out to breakfast and they said, did you hear about what the Dodgers are going to do? I guess uh, they have they have some inside contacts to the, at, to the Dodgers organization. And so they, they talked over breakfast. At the, and this is before anybody knew. It wasn't, it wasn't out yet. And they said, we've got to do something. So these five lay Catholics after Holy Mass, you know, eating breakfast, they said, we, so they started organizing this. They met for a few, two or three days. And, you know, maybe we'll make some billboards out of cartons and, and uh, we'll maybe uh, who, uh, we'll uh, put out a, a press release, uh, send it to the diocese. So they're thinking, thinking. Then Johnny, they said, why don't you just call your brother? Yeah, that's a good your, idea. Your, your, brother's, kind, your brother's pretty <laughs> connected, connected yeah. and, and, and he can probably help us. Now, don't get me wrong. We need foot soldiers and none of us, I'm not on the, out there in oh. the ground either. Is Johnny Epp or Terry Barber oh. right there in, at Dodgers proper. We've got a, but they said, let me call. So when they said that and they ran it by me, I said, okay, I know who I'm going to pull in. I got to pull in the big guns. That's when I called him Terry, my buddy here, and, and John Yep. Yeah. I said, these two guys have been organizing events for years. They know how to do it. So I brought them in. Now we started having these Zoom calls on our phone. And uh, 
that's how this was born. It was born because we, we, the, the, the principle of subsidiarity, yep. it was Johnny, David, his wife and Laura, they were down there doing the, the permits, meeting with the, with the police department, uh, meeting with department of, of, of works. They were doing all the legwork that had to be done at Dodger stadium, uh, where we could park. But then it was Terry Barber and John Yep that put their collective minds together because of their their experience on organizing big events. And this is how it happened. Now, I was kind of on the sidelines calling people up, calling this apostolate. Are you in? Yeah, we're in. Calling that apostolate. Can you? Yeah, we're in. Getting their advertising power. Exactly. What can you do? Okay, we can make signs. We can put billboards. We'll send cars around with neon signs. So everybody, Terry, that I ended up calling, they said, yes, we're in. And you know why they said we're in? I'll be honest with you, Terry, because they like us personally. We have a personal personal relationship with them. We don't get into the weeds about this guy's the jerk. This guy's this, this guy's that. This. Nope. No, Terry and me stay out of that. We try to work with anybody who can say the Nicene Creed and mean it and try to live in a state of grace. We all understand that we're broken, man. We got our quirks. We got our uh, defects, imperfections, our concupiscence. Yeah. I get that. But Terry and me, you know what? We're not going to allow Satan to divide oh. us, right? This is a moment right now. United, United, we stand divided. We fall. So Terry, myself, and John, yep, we're going to do what we we can to unite Catholic apostolates yes. so that we can be a counter force, Terry. Anytime the, the sisters of perpetual indulgence per, do these public displays of anti-Catholicism and the temple of Satan, yep. when they do these public just we got, Terry, now we got an organized oh, yeah. response against these enemies of God. And you know what, Jesse, the equipment we purchased this time will be used anywhere in the country for all these apostolates. When we realize we're much more powerful when we're united rather than independent, this is uh, what we found. And I just want to publicly thank all of those who came to that rally, all of the apostolates that supported the promoting this prayerful vigil of reparation, because we couldn't have done it without you. And I just want to say that, Jesse, uh, the Dodgers got the message. Uh, it's really clear that they understand. And, you know, <clears throat> there's only one other ballpark. It's in the, 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 the Texas Rangers. They tried doing this, and the public said no. See, and so I want to suggest <laughs> all the other people that watch, listening to us around the country, mention, try, start staying, making a stink about it at your, whether you're in Oakland, uh, San Francisco, wherever, because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And I think that we've been far too quiet over the last 50 years. As a matter of fact, Jesse, I think what's happened is our fires have gone out and this event is going to light the fire and make this the Catholic moment because I think uh, with devotion to the Sacred Heart and Immaculate Heart that are celebrated right after each other, this is what we can do to bring back the presence of God in a culture that acts like God doesn't exist. Yeah, I'm telling you, Terry, we are we are tired as these several Catholic yes. apostolates, starting with Virgin the Most Powerful and Catholic Vote. Yes. We're gonna be bring just we're gonna bring Jesus Christ back into the public square. This country needs Jesus, and we're not Amen. gonna stay, we're not gonna stay at home and just hide and say, Oh yeah, we need Jesus. No. We need to be out there in public. And you know what? This is a lay run effort. And so I, I'm glad that the bishops are praying for us. They're doing yeah. holy hours. The man, yes. I, I'm glad about that. But this needs to be run by lay people, Terry. And, uh, and we got the organizational uh, experience to do so. I got to say this. I thank the bishops for our, our Archbishop Gomez here in Los Angeles going to have that special mass. I'm convinced he wouldn't have had that mass and he wouldn't have said it if we didn't push. No, I'm serious, Jesse. And that's how it works. Because I'll tell you what, most of the bishops are frightened. There's only one bishop that I know. There's a handful of them that aren't frightened. But there's one that came all the way from East Texas to pray with us. That's Bishop Joseph Strickland. He's fearless, Jess. And, and we need more bishops like that because what happens is when you become fearful, whether it's the um, COVID or uh, lawsuits or you know uh, fear of uh, making people angry at you, you do nothing. And this is what we lay people, I think, are going to inspire more bishops to stand up and say, wow, look at those peak Catholics. Look at those people in Los Angeles. They went out and prayed right in public. public. What was I doing? Oh, uh, um, I was busy watching the game or whatever. See, my point to you is it should inspire bishops, priests, all the people in the church to stand up for Jesus and not be frightened because I really believe many people who talked to me that didn't want to go said, oh, I, I couldn't do that in public. 
I, I have my religion, it's private. Well, you know what? That's not the way the gospel is all about. The gospel was supposed to be proclaimed to every inch of planet Earth. Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Terry, it's pretty simple. The sin of Adam and Eve yeah. and, the, and our human sin, yes, yes. it was done in public. That's right. And so that's why the Son of God, he allowed himself to be crucified right. in public. Why? Because the public sin of Adam and even the public sin of the human race required public reparation. There you go. That's what the son of God did. He didn't go hide in a cave, say, okay, I'm going to die for the sins of the world in a cave. I'm going to die for the sins of the world in my mom and dad's house in Nazareth. I'm going to die for the sins of the world, you know, hiding here in a carpenter's shed. Right. No, he died in public. Good point. Why? Because public sin requires public, public reparation. And Jesus Christ is the perfect example of that. And Jess, guess who's coming on after us? Here at the Terry and Jesse Show, Bishop <laughs> Joseph Strickland. Yes, I wanted to mention America, something. America's Bishop. America's Bishop. Jesse, I just have to say something. For those people who missed his show, Eight Modern oh, Errors, gosh. Every Catholic Should Know and Avoid, 50,000 YouTube watchers saw that show. That could fill Dodger Stadium wow. in four days. This is a, this bishop he's come. He's like really, really popular. Another thing, Jesse, we had a Jewish rabbi who was supporting us as Catholics saying, hey, after they come for you, they're going to come for us Jews. So he spoke at our conference and listen to this. He got two million views of the video that he put on his webs and his social media and it went viral. Jesse, do you know how many more thousands of YouTube watchers we now have well, on Virgin we'll have, Most Powerful? We'll, we'll have to probably invite him to our next rally. Terry. Yes. <laughs> hey, I would invite him to do a show with us on what we have in common. There you, there you go. Yeah. There you hey, go. Jess. Yeah, that would be good, Terry. Because yeah, well, you, know, you know I'm going to push back nicely. You know that. Of course. Well, so am I. But you know what? That's called <laughs> dialogue, baby, in a good way. Yeah. And he's yeah. a good man. He doesn't yeah. know about Jesus Christ. Well, we'll share Jesus Christ with him. Hey, for just what state should we be living in, brother? State of sanctifying grace. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. Be holy or die trying. And remember, flee this corrupt generation. Make your houses domestic churches and uh, and uh, live in a state of grace. Terry. Remember, Our Lady of Fatima said it. We implemented it on Friday at Dodger Stadium. Souls are going to hell because no one's there to pray and make sacrifices. You hit the streets with your rosary. Yep. We made sacrifices for the conversion of sinners. Yep. I don't care if you're four years old or 104, we can all do that because we reunite our sufferings with the sufferings of Christ to help redeem the world. You're participating in Calvary when you're united with Jesus. Thanks again for joining us here on Virgin Most Powerful Radio.